In the colorful tapestry of 20th century religious movements, one thread stands out in stark contrast. A jet black strand woven by Anton Sandor LaVey, the enigmatic founder of the Church of Satan. His life, a blend of showmanship, philosophy and controversy, would leave an indelible mark on modern alternative spirituality. Born Howard Stanton Levy on April 11, 1930, in Chicago, Illinois, LaVey's early years were far from the darkness he would later embrace. His parents, Michael and Gertrude Levy, encouraged their son's budding musical talents. Young Howard showed a prodigious aptitude for various instruments, but it was the keyboard that truly captured his heart. As a boy, LaVey played piano in a Baptist church, an ironic beginning for the future Black Pope. His teenage years found him at Tamil Payas High School in Mill Valley, California, where he continued to hone his musical skills, adding the oboe to his repertoire. At 16, LaVey's life allegedly took a dramatic turn. He claimed to have left high school to join the Clyde Beatty Circus, first as a roustabout and cage boy for the Big Cats, then as a musician playing the Calliope. LaVey would later say this experience was pivotal in shaping his worldview. He spoke of playing moody tunes like Earl Hagen's Harlem Nocturne for the circus crowds. But more importantly, he claimed to have observed a phenomenon that would fuel his cynicism towards organized religion. LaVey said he noticed the same men who attended the body Saturday night shows would be present at Sunday morning revival meetings, a hypocrisy that deeply affected him. However, it's crucial to note that these claims have been disputed. Journalist Lawrence Wright, in his investigations, found no evidence to support LaVey's circus adventures. Whether or not the circus tales were true, LaVey's musical talents were real. In the winter of 1948, he began working as an organist in bars, lounges, and nightclubs. His skill on the keys opened doors, helping him secure gigs in the vibrant nightlife scene. It was during this period that Levy made one of his most audacious claims, a brief affair with a then-unknown Marilyn Monroe. He said she was a dancer at the Mayan Theater in Los Angeles, where he played. Like many of LaVey's stories, this too has been challenged by Monroe's contemporaries and the manager of the Mayan, who stated the theater was never used as a burlesque house. The 1950s saw LaVey settling in San Francisco, a city that would become the backdrop for his most infamous acts. In 1951, at the age of 21, he married 15-year-old Carol Lansing. The following year, they welcomed their daughter, Carla LaVey. To avoid the Korean War draft, LaVey claimed to have studied criminology at City College of San Francisco. He then said he obtained a job as a photographer for the San Francisco Police Department, where he worked for three years. LaVey also asserted that he worked as a psychic investigator for the SFPD, looking into 800 calls. However, like many of LaVey's claims, researchers have found no records to substantiate these jobs. As the 1960s dawned, LaVey began to craft the persona that would define him. He purchased a striking black Victorian house at 61 on 14 California Street in San Francisco, a home that would become infamous as the Black House. He drove a conspicuous coroner's van and even kept a pet black leopard named Zoltan. LaVey's interest in the occult blossomed during this time. He began hosting Friday night lectures on esoteric topics, attracting a diverse crowd of San Francisco notables. Guests at his parties included writers, artists, and occultists like Michael Harner and Kenneth Anger. It was during this period that LaVey formed a group called the Order of the Trapezoid, which would later evolve into the governing body of the Church of Satan. The defining moment of LaVey's life came on April 30, 1966, while Purgisnacht a traditional European festival associated with witchcraft. On this night, Lave ritualistically shaved his head, allegedly in the tradition of ancient executioners, and declared the founding of the Church of Satan. Lave proclaimed 1966 as Year One Anno Satanus, the first year of the Age of Satan. This dramatic gesture was perfectly calibrated to capture public attention, and it succeeded spectacularly. 
The Church of Satan was not about worshiping a literal devil, but rather about embracing man's carnal nature and rejecting traditional spirituality. LaVey's Satanism was atheistic, viewing Satan as a symbol of pride, liberty, and individualism. Anton LaVey was not just a showman, but also a prolific writer. His books formed the cornerstone of his philosophy and the doctrines of the Church of Satan. Let's explore his literary output, which spans several decades. In 1969, LaVey published his most famous and influential work, The Satanic Bible. This book became the fundamental text of LaVeyan Satanism, outlining its basic tenets and rituals. It includes the nine satanic statements, the nine satanic sins, and the eleven satanic rules of the earth, which form the core of Levy's philosophy. Following the success of the Satanic Bible, Levy released The Satanic Rituals in 1972. This companion volume provided more detailed instructions for satanic ceremonies and rites, including adaptations of H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. In 1971, Levey published The Satanic Witch, originally titled The Complete Witch. This book focused on the application of satanic philosophy to manipulation and seduction, particularly from a female perspective. The Devil's Notebook, released in 1992, is a collection of essays that further elaborated on LaVey's ideas. It covers topics ranging from cannibalism and criminality to erotic crystallization inertia. LaVey's final book, Satan Speaks, was published in 1998, shortly after his death. It's another compilation of essays, offering LaVey's thoughts on various subjects including misanthropy, martyrdom, and might is right philosophy. In addition to these main works, LaVey also authored shorter pieces and contributed to other publications. His essays were featured in the Church of Satan's official newsletter, The Cloven Hoof, and he wrote the introduction to a 1986 reprint of Might is Right by Ragnar Redbeard, a book that heavily influenced his own writings. LaVey's literary output wasn't limited to prose. He also released three albums, The Satanic Mass in 1968, Satan Takes a Holiday in 1995, and Strange Music in 1994. These albums featured a mix of spoken word, ritual recordings, and Levy's own organ performances. Levy's philosophy, as expressed in his books, drew from various sources. He incorporated ideas from Friedrich Nietzsche's concept of the Ubermensch, Ayn Rand's objectivism, and the social Darwinism of Herbert Spencer. He also borrowed heavily from Might is Right, a 19th century text by Ragnar Redbeard, even incorporating reworked excerpts into the Satanic Bible. The core of Levey's philosophy, as outlined in his books, was the celebration of the self. He preached indulgence instead of abstinence, vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams, and undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. His nine satanic statements, outlined in The Satanic Bible, encapsulated this worldview. LaVey's books were controversial, often misunderstood, and sometimes sensationalized. However, they've had a lasting impact on the landscape of alternative spirituality and continue to be read and discussed today, decades after their initial publication.